This is the GL iNet Slate 7, a dual band Wi-Fi 7 travel router. This little powerhouse has blazing speed, can handle up to 120 plus devices simultaneously, and has this interactive touchscreen. In this video, I'm gonna show you what this guy can do and who might this be for. Let's get into it. As far as travel routers are concerned, it might be safe to say that I'm a big fan of the GL iNet. Along with the new Slate 7 that we're looking at today, I have the Barrel AX and even the older original Slate. My name is Patrick and this is Everyday Tech. Everyday Tech for Everyday People. Today we're looking at the GL iNet GLBE3600 dual band Wi-Fi 7 travel router. Now full disclosure, GL iNet did reach out to me, asked me if I take a look at this router. Although they did provide this to me for free, they're not seeing this video before it goes up. All my opinions are my own. Before we take a look at this device, let's talk about why you would even need a travel router. So I mainly break this down into three main categories, security, convenience, and production. So let's first talk about security. Now, if you're one that travels a lot, or if you're like me, you're always out and about all the time in coffee shops or other places with public Wi-Fi's, you're either connected to a network that's not secure or at least a network that you don't have control over. So you don't know how secure that network is or who might be there trying to look at the traffic. Now, having a travel router gives you another layer of added security. Then on top of that, if you're, you, it gives you the ability to connect to a VPN server, whether it's paid or a free one. And yet that gives you another layer of security. In the matter of convenience, when you're traveling to a new location, let's say, especially if you're traveling with a family and you may take a lot of devices with you, with my family, family traveling with my wife and two kids, we potentially can bring along with us eight devices between cell phones, computers, and tablets. Instead of connecting to each one, each device one by one to the new location, I just have to make sure I, ahead of time, I'm connecting it to the travel router. And then when I get to the new location, I just connect the travel router to the new network. And then all my devices are ready, are ready to go. And if you have a VPN service, uh, when you connect your travel router to that VPN, automatically all your devices are connected to it. And lastly, production. When I'm doing a remote production job and I have devices that communicate through a network, this is a great way for me to create my own private network for my production setup. And I have, I can have all of this set up before going on location. The Slate 7, of course, supports Wi-Fi 7 or 802.11be. Now this gives us faster speeds, lower latency, and enhanced reliability. Now GLINet claims that this has wireless connection speeds of up to 2,882 megabits a second on the five gigahertz band, 788 megabits a second on the 2.4 gigahertz band. This has dual 2.5 gig ethernet ports. That means if you have confined compatible Wi-Fi 7 devices, this potentially can connect faster wirelessly than the ethernet ports actually. Now this has 1.1 gigahertz Qualcomm quad core CPU as a one gigabyte DDR4 RAM. Now the advantage of having faster processor and more RAM allows you to do more multitasking and faster VPN performance. Now this also gives you headroom to install and run other apps such as AdGuard and even Docker. Let's take a quick tour around the travel router. And when we start, we need to start with the LCD screen, of course. So this shows at a glance of what is connected. So right now we're in repeater mode, but whatever is connected either via ethernet or a cellular USB dongle, or even your phone, this will light up green what is connected. Right now we're in repeater mode, connected to my home network. Then we can swipe to the right, we get the time, then we get the CPU usage, the flash onboard memory, and then the actual RAM itself. Then we get into the different performances. This, you need to have it in certain modes to get this real time reading. Then we come to the different services of this travel router. We have the Tor service, AdGuard, and we have our VPN services. So I've already configured my home VPN to connect to this. So that's why I'm able to turn it on and off. But we also have, of course, support for open VPN. And since it's not configured, we don't have the on and off button. But once we have it configured, we'll get the same kind of configuration there. Then we have the different networks that this uh, travel router creates for your devices connect to. 
So if you have a different device connecting to it, or a new device, then you can just have them scan the QR code that it creates as well. So it does the different services there. Then if we swipe from the top down, we can reboot and lock the travel router. Just make sure you don't do accidental uh, touches while it's in your bag or something like that. So now we did that, but now I have to swipe to unlock. So it's very intuitive as far as the touchscreen is concerned. And then moving on to the rest of the router, if we put up the antenna here, we see that we have our reset button here and our mode button. These are always found on other GL iNet travel routers. And this mode button is to turn on and off different services. But since we do have the touchscreen in front, this is kind of redundant, but it's still kind of nice to know that you have it there. And then moving on to the other side, we can move up the antenna again and this has vents here now going to the back i'm just going to unplug this since we've already seen the actual lcd screen here but we do have our usb-c power delivery port this supports 5 volts 9 volts and 12 volts i put this to a meter and this is really only drawing 5 watts of power so it's very low energy use as well we have our lan ports and wan ports these are 2.5 gig ports, and you can convert these both to LAN ports if you're needing both ports, if you're connected in repeater mode. And then we have our USB uh, 3.0 port. You can hook up a hard drive to this or a flash drive. It needs to be in FAT32 or XFAT uh, formats as well. One of the things that stood out to me when I did my Barrel AX review was how much bigger it was than the original Slate, the GLAR750S. Now that trend continues with the Slate 7. Now taking a look at it out of the box, I was really surprised how chunky this thing is. Now for years I carried it around the original Slate and now these things just keep getting bigger and bigger. Now I'll put the dimensions on the screen and I'll let you know in person that it is noticeably bigger. Now here's an overhead shot of how they compare. Here we are in the GL iNet admin panel, and this is version 4.7.1. And right away, we see what mode or how our Slate 7 is connected to another network. So it can be either the Ethernet ports or through a repeater mode, meaning through a Wi-Fi to Wi-Fi network. We can also tether to our phone or use a USB cellular modem as well. Now WLAN clients are the wireless devices connected to our Slate 7. In this case, it's my Mac mini. And then if we have any devices connected via the LAN or ethernet port, it'll show up here as well. And down here, it shows us what we're connected to. In this case, we're getting some errors right now. It's just the way I have this demo or this network set up right now. But in normal cases, this will be green and no errors here. That means we're properly connected to another Wi-Fi network such as a coffee shop network, hotel network, et cetera. Uh, we could switch the networks through this button here. But if we want to get through a captive portal, we would say modify. You want to make sure that this auto enable login mode for public hotspot is enabled. So let me insert a short clip of me connecting to the Starbucks Wi-Fi network and how I got through the captive portal there. So I'm at a Starbucks right now and I need to connect to this Starbucks Wi-Fi network. And the thing I need to enable is auto enable login mode for public hotspots. And this will allow me to connect to a captive portal. It'll bring up the captive portal as if I'm connecting through the travel router itself. And this will take a little while to connect depending on the network. It depends on the network. When I'm at home, it connects right away to my home network. So now I'm connected. It says I'm not connected to the internet, but there shows that it, there is a captive portal. So it said go to login. So right now I'm filling out the login information here. And after I do this, I am already connected. And I connected as the Slate 7 and not the device I'm on. So right now it still says I can't connect to the internet, but it just means that this page hadn't refreshed. So right now I'm gonna go to a web page, everydaytech.tv and it shows that I'm actually connected to the internet. On the left side here, we have the major sections of our admin panel. I'm not gonna go through everything in detail. I'll call out a few features. We have the wireless section where we can create our hotspot network for other devices to connect to. 
clients are what are actually connected, what devices are actually connected to our Slate 7. We have cloud services here. We have Good Cloud and Astro Warp. Now, if you don't know what these are, you probably don't need them. I did a little research on them and I realized I don't need them as well. Good Cloud is how we can connect uh, to number of devices or manage a number of devices in the cloud uh, on our network. Astro Warp is another quality of service kind of connection service. Then we have our VPN section where we can use the Slate 7 as both a client to connect to a remote VPN server or have the Slate 7 as a VPN server itself. And this supports OpenVPN and WireGuard. In the application section, this is where we can install different plugins or applications into the Slate 7 directly. So you can put a web server on here. There's other services that this supports. Uh, the other thing I'll call out is TailScale, which is basically like a cloud-based VPN service. Uh, it's very easy to configure and it might be a very good option for a lot of people. So I'll probably do that, uh, do a video on that in the near future as well. In the networks, we have some advanced features. If you don't know what some of these are, you probably don't want to touch them. We have port forwarding. We can configure our local LAN. We can create a guest network. Something I'll point out here is this multi-WAN feature. So we can connect to the internet you know, through the ethernet port, through Wi-Fi, or through tethering. And you can actually utilize or connect to all three of these ports at the same time. Now they don't do network bonding, which kind of increases the speed and the quality of your network connection, but you can use them in different ways. So we have a fallover mode, which basically if one fails, it'll go to the next connection to try to keep you continuously connected to the internet. Then you have load balancing, which basically you can route different devices to different connections to make sure that you don't clog up your network or your network connection here. So I thought that was a pretty cool feature that they included in here. And the last section is the system section where we can get an overview of the CPU loadage, memory usage, and the onboard storage. And of course, this is all that we can see on the outside of the unit itself on the LCD screen, but you can also see it in the admin panel as well. We can upgrade our firmware here and we can do a number of different things through the admin panel. Before I get into my final conclusions, let me tell you some of the things I like and dislike about this travel router. First, what I like, it's a full feature travel router. There's so many things you can do with it as we saw through the admin interface tour. And then it has future proofed performance, meaning I could have this router for years to come. And then the LCD screen on the outside is really great. It gives me a lot of different functionalities I can turn on and off. Also gives me a glance of the status of things and also the IP address and all the different informations that I would like to look at. Then as far as back to the software is concerned, this still has the best way to handle captive portals of of any other travel router that I've dealt with. So what are some of the things I don't like? Well, first of all, this thing is pretty bulky. These things are getting bulkier and bulk bulkier. And the other thing is, how about the startup times? The startup times was kind of slow. Maybe it was my expectations of this being a faster travel router. It's probably on par with the other travel routers, but I was expecting this to start up a little bit faster. And then the last thing is, it's pretty expensive. You can get the Barrel AX for almost half the price. And if you go with even the less expensive Opal model, that's about a fourth of the price. And I would argue most people would be happy with the Opal model as well. Overall, what I recommend getting the GL Inan BE3600 Slate 7 travel router. Now with these kind of things, it all depends on your use case and your budget. Now, if you're someone that needs a reliable travel router, on the go, especially for production work, then definitely get the Slate 7. If you're someone constantly on the go and you just want something reliable for years to come, then the Slate 7 might be for you as well. But again, it's all about your budget, but also your use case. For most people, this is overkill. There are not too many Wi-Fi 7 compatible devices out there. I only have one compatible device, which is my iPhone 16 Pro. But even if all the devices had Wi-Fi 7 in them, 
For most people, they never even come close to the potential capabilities of this router. The main use case I see for most people using is connecting up to two to four devices, even sometimes one, connecting to a coffee shop, hotel, or even a public Wi-Fi network. For most people, getting the Barrel AX at half the price or the Opal at a quarter of the price are great options. Now check out the review I did on comparing those two devices as well. But what the Slate 7 represents is the latest tech that GLINet has to offer in travel routers. Now this option is for a few that the need the latest bleeding edge performance. But for the rest of us, it shows us what we have to look forward to in the future as well, as far as travel routers are concerned. Thanks again to GLINet for sending this out to me. Check out my playlist of travel router videos, including creating one with a Raspberry Pi. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. Consider hitting that subscribe button. Until the next one, see ya.